Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through a prototype of Aquatica, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the undersea world of Aquatica, where uh, players are each running their own kingdom with a unique leader and several followers trying to recruit more followers and conquer undersea locations, all while trying to chase after four randomly chosen objectives that I've already set up here. In this game, uh, we're racing to be the first, ideally, to get seven mantas. Each player starts with four, but there are plenty more to grab. We are racing to be the the first to conquer one of each of the four types of territory, uh, to uh, get five underwater locations completely risen. I'll explain that in a minute. And what's this one? This one is... Uh, oh, this is five... have recruited five people that can conquer. They can give the conquer ability. But you can see there are also preset ones on the board. So, I mean, the game has a ton of replayability with all of these different objectives uh, in different combinations because once somebody has done all four objectives, that triggers the end of the game. That's the most likely way. You could also, in the game, if there's no more locations to conquer or no more people to recruit, but most likely we are racing to complete these objectives as fast as possible. So, who are we? Well, I am... Kai the Nimble and Jen is going to be playing as Mara the Shady. As you can see, we each get our own special power. As a result, the rest of our followers are all exactly the same. And the game actually comes with a good assortment of leaders. So there's more setup variability you're going to get every time you play. Uh, because maybe you'll be Saul the Great, or my favorite, Herbert the Forceful. Because, yeah, when you think underwater uh, monarch, you think Herbert, don't you? Anyway, so, uh, we've got set up. Kai and Mara are set up, ready to start conquering territory. We each start with four Mantas, the same four, and the same six followers plus ourselves. And by the way, when I say Manta, I mean Manta. This is a prototype. Bear that in mind. The real game, instead of just coming with cardboard chips to represent these Mantas that give us special powers, it actually comes with cool little Manta minis uh, that are nice little sculpted things. They show you one side what player belongs to, and the other side what power. This Manta goes and finds money, undersea money, for us. And these are just lovely little, so you have to imagine all of these tokens and all of these tokens over here are going to be an army of undersea mantas waiting to do our bidding. Okay. So, how does the game work? Well, it's super simple. On your turn, you're going to take one of the cards from your hand, play it, and do whatever it says. Uh, all the cards have little icons, but they also they don't need those icons because they've got nice text summaries of what they do as well. And that's your turn. You're going to play one card, do what it says. And in addition to that, you can activate your mantas by flipping them over to say that they are exhausted to get extra little bonuses as well. And in addition to that, you can potentially get bonuses out of the territory that you've already taken over. Although at the beginning of the game, neither of us have any... Uh, location cards. So, uh, maybe I should go on ahead and fix that. Maybe I should uh, start out by deploying my Sea Lord, which would let me buy a location at a discount of one. And I would need it because at the beginning of the game, I have no gold. Actually, that's not true. I have one Manta that could give me one gold. So, if I were to play my Sea Lord right off the bat, buy a location with a discount of one. So, that means I could basically pay two. The one for this Manta plus air. And you know what? Actually, there is a location. This location right over here, it is a sunken ship. It's that type of location. It either takes four military strength to conquer or two gold to purchase. So yeah, what the heck? Uh, let's start out. I'm going to go on ahead and play my Sea Lord. Buy a location with a discount of one. Now he goes into my discard pile right here. I'll be able to get him back later. And a discount of one won't do it because I need three, 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 four, or two. But by using this Manta, I have one plus that discount means I have gotten my first location. And here's where the game gets really interesting, folks. Because when you get a location, you can see you've got five slots on your little kingdom. And what you do is you pick a slot and you start sliding them up. 
until you get to the first action. This kingdom is ultimately going to give me four victory points once I have completely risen it, uh, which is to say, have activated that power and that power. Then it's uh, almost worth five points, although to get it to be, to score the five points, I have to actually score it, which means it's placed over here. So there are multiple steps. First, you buy or you know conquer a place, then you've got to use these actions by rising it, and then finally score it. So, um, that was my first turn. A nice little start. And you can see, um, some have only a couple steps. Some of these things actually have quite a few steps, several of which don't actually... I mean, you know, this one, uh, it'll give me two gold for an action, then it does nothing for me, then it gives me three gold for an action, then it does nothing for me, and then finally, it'll give me six points when I score it, plus a manta that generates money. So this underwater sunken city is a source of great wealth which is why it would have cost more, and I couldn't afford it with that discount. So anyway, that was my turn. I played a card. Uh, I used one of my mantas. I could have used more mantas. Um, in fact, I could, interestingly, uh, use this manta, which allows me to raise something to uh, get closer to where I could score it. But that means if I raise it, I won't get to use that ability, so I'm not going to do that. I think I'm done. Uh, that's my turn. I deployed my Sea Lord. And you'll notice the locations do not automatically refill. There are now only five available for Jen to go after on her turn. Okay. And remember, one of the goals is get five locations completely risen. So we have five, and we've uh, shoved them all the way up here. And the first player to do that scores eight points. The second player to do it scores five. So in this game, it kind of makes sense to go for the ones that you can fill up, you can rise quicker, because we're racing to be the first to do this and get a few extra points. So that was my turn. And I am done. It is now Jen's turn. And what is she going to do? Um, let's see... Uh, well, the interesting thing is, Jen's special power, Mara the Shady, she can use her to conquer a sunken ship location, just like that. And there are one, two sunken ship locations out here. This one's pretty expensive. It takes seven military might to do it. So I think Jen is just going to use her own special power, uh, Mara the Shady, to immediately conquer one sunken ship. So it's this one or this one. These are underwater cities. This is a shark valley. And there's a fourth type of location as well. Um... I think Jen will take this one. Okay, and she will go on ahead and take it as well. And just like me, she's got to go on ahead and start rising it. And now, um, basically, the main thing you do on your turn is play a card, do what it says. The other things you can do are, you can activate your mantas to get some money, to get some more military conquering strength, to trigger a rise. Because remember, we want to get these uh, all the way risen as fast as possible. But, um, if the current uh, space up here is green, that means you could trigger that action as well. So, Jen could um, do this, which it says, rise two things. However, a card can't make itself rise. So, Jen needs to conquer another thing because, or, uh, because then, once she has something else that needs rising, she could activate this anytime she wants on her turn to make that other thing rise two spaces. So, uh, there Jen goes. She is starting to make her Undersea Kingdom as well. And it is back to me, back to my turn. And now there are only four more to conquer, which means if I want to, now that there are, if there, if there are ever four or fewer locations, let's see, where is it? I could play my seahorse, which means I do a scouting action, and then I could conquer a location again with another discount. So, um, you know, if I, I mean, and you, I'm chasing after these locations as fast as I can. Um, this thing requires four total strength to discount, but um, what happens is, if I choose to scout with my seahorse, I take the four, or if there are any that have previously been scouted, they all get discarded. They're out of the game. Then the four or fewer come up here, I bump my prototype board, oh dear. And now that means they all have a discount of one for the purposes of conquering. So this used to cost four, now it only costs three. Plus one less for the seahorse means it only costs two. Which means I would only need two total strength to conquer it. Um, and this would give me one... This manta would give me one general strength, but I'd still need one more. This manta gives me two strength, but only for conquering sunken cities. Although, hey, yeah, actually, what the heck? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. This makes sense. All righty. I am going to play my seahorse. Again, scout, then conquer location with a discount of one strength. All righty. So, scouting. 
All of these, if there were any up there, they would go away. They'd be out of the game. Then these four, they come up here. They have all been scouted, which means they are easier to conquer now. They all cost one less. And so I'm getting a discount of one plus one, which means I could... This one that costs three, a minus one, minus two, I only need one more conquering strength to do that. So I could use this one universal conquering strength. That gives me a last one, and I will have conquered my second location. What the heck? Let's do it. So, my second Manta has been spent, and I now have a new one. And as you can see, I've got it risen up here. It's just waiting, and there's a little ant. Hey, little buddy. What are you doing? You're going to drown down there. Be careful. Anyway, so this is uh, two bucks that is now available to me um, whenever I need to spend money to recruit new characters on a future turn. You can see it only costs one, one, two, two, three, or four coins. So I've got two coins queued up here for a future recruitment action. All righty. So uh, that was that. My, I was well timed. And after a scout, of course, all of these refill, six new locations come out. Oh, there we go. Underwater Volcanoes is the fourth type. So we got two volcanoes, uh, another sunken ship, uh, some shark alleys, and another sunken city. Okay, so that was my second turn. And I'm, I'm starting to work on chasing after this, getting five locations all completely risen so I can get the eight points. But I also need to start working on getting um, more mantas, because I don't have enough. Uh, but I, And I also, let's see, so I've got a sunken ship and a city. I also want to do a uh, shark valley and a volcano, because once I've scored one of each type, there's that objective as well. So, things are going pretty well. That was my turn. It is now Jen's turn. And let's see what she is going to do. I think Jen... Remember, there's this other one. Um, hire, or, you know, get five people, or five followers who have a conquer ability. Right. So, um, if we look down here, the Ocean MD, this guy lets you use the power of somebody who's in your discard pile. So that's nice, but that's not going to conquer. This Meg, though, conquer one location with a discount of four. And then other players have to discard one character. So not only does it make it easy to conquer when you've got a Meg shark, but everybody else has one of their people eaten. So Jen would like to recruit him. And let's see, if we were to look over here, Jen could go on ahead and play her Blue Waters agent, which would let her recruit a character. But Jen uh, doesn't have any money off of this. She has her one Manta that would give her one gold, which means she could recruit the Doctor or the Turtle. She needs two gold. So she can't quite get that Meg as much as she would like to. But remember, I've got two gold queued up here. So I'm going to be able to use this gold to recruit somebody more expensive pretty soon. And in the meantime, what is Jen going to do uh, with the rest of her stuff? Let's see. So I started out with a uh, Manta that gives me plus two strength if I'm trying to conquer a undersea uh, sunken city. Jen has one for uh, conquering ships. And this ship right here requires two total strength to conquer. So, Jen could conquer this one very easily using her Manta. So, let's see. Perhaps... Uh, now, Jen cannot do a scouting action because there has to be four or fewer here. So, she cannot use her Seahorse. Um, but, she could use her Legionnaire, which lets her conquer a location with a discount of three. Um, right. Which means she wouldn't even need to use the Manta. She could do that... But, you know, this Legionnaire could go on ahead and do... Yeah. I think Jen... Hmm... Ah! Yeah. Okay. Jen is going to go on ahead and she's going to use her Legionnaire to conquer and get a discount of three. And instead of using money like I did, you know, when, when I bought that first one, Right, when I use my Sea Lord, Jen's going to use Conquering Strength. She gets a discount of three. So this costs four. So it would still cost one more, which means Jen could use her Universal, her Wild Card. Or she could do this one for free. Oh, but what she wants is, if she were to go on ahead and conquer, this one would be free because she gets the discount. The first rising effect on this is Jen could um, get two uh, Strength towards conquering an Undersea Volcano. And there are two undersea volcanoes out here right now. Um, although they aren't particularly expensive ones. But it's, you know, normally in a game you want to go for the expensive ones because that's where the big points are. But in this game we want to go for the quick ones because we're trying to get a bunch of stuff risen. 
Let's see. Um, now, if Jen wants to go big, she could go on ahead and do conquer this one, which requires five total strength. Um, nope, she can't quite do it. She gets a discount of three from her Legionnaire. She could get one more, so that would be four, but she would need one more to be able to conquer it. And unfortunately, this one won't help her because it only goes towards conquering uh, sunken ships, whereas this is a Shark Alley one. So Jen can't quite pull that one off, but she could get this one. Yeah, I think she likes this one. She has a discount of three from her Legionnaire. Uh, activating her mantle will give her the four she needs to be able to conquer this. And look at this. It's going to give her some money so she could try to recruit that Meg next turn. So Jen has just conquered this with her Legionnaire and with the help of a Manta. And so this is queued up, ready to give Jen two bucks to recruit that Meg next turn. Um, if she can do it. However, unfortunately, remember I've got this money queued up? I think... I have that same recruit card. Where is mine? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my Blue Water Agent to recruit a character. Uh, and I will go on ahead and use this to give me the two bucks I need to recruit this Meg. It's mine! Yum, yum, yum. Okay, and it goes into my hand for future use. Now... Unlike the locations that only get refreshed if players take the time to scout, these get cheaper over time. New ones are always coming out. Because strictly speaking, it's usually easier to get locations than it is to get characters. To get that money, well, you got to kind of work for it. So anyway, so that was that. And Jen knows I'm going to be using this Meg pretty soon, which means she's going to have to discard somebody who's going to get uh, be some collateral damage. So that was that. It is now Jen's turn. And she just missed it. Uh, the Meg she was going to get for two, because now she's got her three bucks. Um, shucks, shucks, shucks. So what is Jen going to do instead? Now remember, Jen, uh, she's going to play a card. You always do that on your turn. But Jen has this power. Anytime she wants, either before or after she plays the main card of her turn, she could rise this that says, rise something else, two spaces. So she could just go boom, boom, and get this thing completely risen, just like that, off of a one-two combo, if Jen wants to. But then she'd be throwing that money away. So I don't think she wants to use this power right yet, because uh, she wants to actually get that money by doing recruiting. And you know what? There's another Meg out there. There's another Meg out there. And so, Jen, I think, now that she's got some more cash on hand, she's actually got one, two, three because of that, uh, what do you call it, that Manta, means Jen will go on ahead and recruit a character now. And, she, all right, so, she could get the other Meg. So we both have a Meg. We can both be chomping on each other. Or, Jen could just use the two of this and get a researcher, which um, lets you rise three. Um, you know, and you can split that up amongst different things. Um, and everybody else gets to rise one. So the researcher helps you get these things finished. Because remember, you can't score them until they're completely risen. And once they are completely risen, that's when you want to play your seer. Or your seer, I guess. <laughs> I think they meant seer. Where you get to score two locations that have completely risen. Although, again, the interesting thing in this game is we don't want to do that right away. We want to have five risen that we haven't scored yet because of this objective. That really makes this game feel a little bit different. Okay. So, although, you know, yeah. So, Jen, um, she's going to play her agent. She's going to have two bucks. And she will go on ahead and spend the other to get a Meg of her very own. Alrighty, and then this doctor moves down, and then there's another turtle, the treasurer, and so that was Jen's turn. Although, although, Jen is going to activate this Manta as well, because you can activate the Mantas you have either before or after your main action. This is a free rise, because this, um, now that Jen got the money out of this location. Now it's kind of stuck here doing nothing for her. So that's why Jen will trigger the rise. And now this is completely risen. Once Jen scores it, she gets four points. But in the meantime, because Jen is completely risen this, she immediately gets a Manta that generates one buck for her. So now Jen is starting to chase after the get a bunch of Mantas in um, hand uh, because Jen has gotten this. When she gets this one all the way up, she'll get another Manta. I'll get a Manta when I get this one filled up. So there are a lot of benefits. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing. We're trying to grab these locations, scout them, grab them, and then rise them so that we can score them all while chasing after these objectives. So that's it. And um, it is my turn again. Although... Yeah, yeah. And so, is it time to bring out the Mighty Meg? Um, you know what? 
Actually, I think... I mean, I, I mean, so I can conquer her location with a discount of four, and then Jen will have to discard one of the cards in her hand, although she can always get them back. Uh, cards that are discarded, they're one of our cards... What is it? It's the Matrona is the one that we can play to get all of our cards back out of the discard pile and re um, unflip all of our Mantas. It's basically when you play her, you spend an entire turn doing nothing other than resetting yourself. And she herself can never be discarded. So, um, you don't want to be in a situation where you're playing her until you've made really good use of all your cards to get maximum um, efficiency out of her. So, anyway, I'm sorry. Was I going to go on ahead and meg it up? Yeah. Let's meg it up. The Meg. Alrighty. Conquer one location with a discount of four. And if it happens to be a sunken city, I can use this. So I'd actually have six total strength towards a sunken city. Although, unfortunately, there are no sunken cities out here. So I'll probably save this guy for later. Um, let's go on ahead and let's see. So it's a four, which means I can't do that when I need a five. Although these ones are up here too, remember. I totally forgot. These are up here, and this is a sunken city that costs six, minus one, that's five, uh, plus the meg, that's four, five, and this is overkill. I'm spending seven to get this sunken city. All right. Nice. And I'll go on ahead and start. And you can see this one gives me, well, it's got big money, big points, a big manta, but it's also got a couple of spaces I got to skip past as well. But don't forget, I've got this thing that lets me, once I've spent some money with it, then I'll be able to use this. After I spent some money, I'll be able to use that to go back to get to the next bit of money so I can recruit even faster. All righty. Although also, I also want to move this up like this to trigger this so I can get to that money quicker. Now that I think I will do. And here's the other interesting thing. Now I've got this power. If I wanted to use this, this symbol is, sorry, it's a little Rolez, low res is um, immediately finish any card. So if I were to do this, I could just instantly go boom and skip all of that and get this thing. And now it means I'm throwing away a bunch of money, but I'm also getting to where, hey, I can get myself another Manta right now. I'm going to do that. That was not my original plan, but this game is a race. And um, so I have just gotten, because remember, we're racing to get a bunch of mantas on hand. Now I've got two of the five things I need for that other objective. And I've still got two bucks queued up over here for another nice recruiting action. Now meanwhile, that's what I did, but Jen, um, somebody got chomped when my Meg went out. And so Jen has to get... Now she cannot um, discard her Matrona because you always have to keep this to be able to recover. So um, I don't think... I think Jen will say goodbye... Jen doesn't have a lot of money, so I think she'll say goodbye to her Sea Lord, which is the one that I used right off the bat that lets you send money. Although, this volcano, you could get for free. So Jen doesn't want to say goodbye to her Sea Lord. Jen will say... Jen, we're not planning on scoring for a while because we have this crazy objective. So Jen will say goodbye to her Seer for a while. Okay. So that, that happened in the attack. Okay, so that was my turn. As you can see, uh, that was a nice little combo that I got a bunch of stuff ready. So on a future turn, if it weren't for this objective, I would definitely want to play my Seer to get both of these scored. Because remember, not only are we racing to be the first to have five risen, we're racing to be the first to have five scored of unique types. So... If I think that Jen is going to, you know, or if Jen thinks that I am going to be able to beat her to this, then she probably wants to start um, chasing after this so she can beat me to that one. So there's a little bit of give and take there. Although there's an interesting thing. The painful part is whenever you complete one of these four objectives, which we need to do, remember that's the main way the game triggers is when somebody does all four of the objectives, you have to give up one of your mantas, your personal mantas, to mark that you've scored it. So um, you're getting close to the end, but you're also making yourself weaker, which is a nice little twist. Okay, so that was it. Jen, she could deploy her Meg, but she's just going to deploy her Sea Lord, which is by a location with a discount of one. And, which means she could afford this one, uh, which would cost nothing, or this one. Uh, she, her discount of one won't let her do those. Uh, she doesn't have any money over here. Um, I think she will... She will go on ahead and, and do this one. Um, with the, uh, the, the discount... Right, so this has a... Oh, yeah. So this has a total of two. Discount of one, and her, her universal match she got, that gave her what she needed to be able to do this one. And you will notice now, Jen has a shark and a sunken. So now, if Jen gets a volcano, she's got all four types, which means she's chasing after that pretty quick. And this one she just got made it easier for her to get to conquer volcanoes. That's the volcano conquer. So, that was pretty nice. 
And, um, yeah. And she still got her Meg. And... Now, here's the thing. Remember, Jen's got this queued up. If she wants to, she could just use this, and that says, rise two things. She could just go, boom, boom. And just like that, she's got this one completely risen now. And, um, which means she gets another Manta, which means she's chasing after the uh, get the most Manta objective. And, well, let's see, what, what is that? That is a Manta that helps her conquer um, uh, sunken cities. If I can find that over there. It's one of these. Oh, here, nope, there we go. Here it is. Yes, so Jen just got her sixth Manta. So Jen is very close to figuring that. And she's still in it to win it for chasing after the sinking stuff. And, um, you know, unlike me, I've got two sunken cities. So I'm not doing as good at trying to get one of each type. So that worked out pretty well for Jen. She didn't have to eat anybody. And uh, so that was her turn. Although, again... Uh, and so, right, she's still got two Mantas, one that helps her uh, conquer sunken ships and one that helps her conquer sunken cities. I don't think she wants to use either of those because she wants to go after a volcano, and there are two volcanoes out here so that she can get them scored and trigger that faster than me. All right, so that was Jen's turn, and it is my turn again. I'm getting down to four cards. I do have some more money off of this one. So, although um, I don't have either of the... Let's see. Yeah, I don't have any cards that would allow me to use money. Because um, I've used my Sea Lord that lets me use money to get buy locations. And I've used my agent that lets me use money to recruit. So this money I've got right here, there's nothing I can do with it. Ah, and I've got one, two, three. Now, if I if I want to, I could just use this Manta going and say, hey, I don't care about the money. I'm just trying to get these risen faster because, hey, I'll get myself another Manta. So I could chase Jen on the Manta race or I could save it. And if I want to get to where I can spend this one, two, three bucks, maybe now is the time to say, hey, how about I go on ahead and use Matrona? So uh, her special power is I get all of my Mantas back. I get all of my characters back, including her. So now I am totally reset. That was my turn. And if I wanted to, I could... Well, I mean, I could use this Manta to go on ahead and do this, but I don't think there's any reason to do that. So I've just kind of reset myself. So I've got my opportunity to spend money because I want to spend this money as fast as possible. That was my turn. I am reset, ready to go. It is Jen's turn. And just in time for me to get all my characters back, she might want to use her Meg. Oh, that was not very smart of me. Jen will go on ahead and conquer something. And now I got to discard one of these things I just went and got. Oh, no. That was foolish. I'll get rid of my seer because I'm not going to score for a while because i got to get that thing done. And Jen, meanwhile, with her gigantic shark discount of four. Remember, Jen wants a volcano so that she'll have one of each of the four types because she's got that in mind as well. So this thing, requi this volcano requires three. The discount of four from the super shark means Jen has locked this into place. Although it's got four steps to go through before she can actually get... So she's got to find a way to score those. And unfortunately, um, you know, Jen's running out of stuff too. Jen's going to have to use her Matrona before too long as well. So that was Jen's turn. It's back to me, back to my turn. And I want to use this money. Use that money. Uh, Like, so, yeah. I'm going to go ahead. I, I got my recruiter guy back. Where'd he go? The, uh, the Blue Water Agent. So I spend money. I'll spend this two bucks to recruit a grabber which is another conquering card. Because remember, there's a race to get the most conquering cards first. And how many conquering cards do I have now? I've got one, two, three, four, four! I need one more conquering card! Alrighty. So I'm close to getting that. And um, so that was nice. And so this is set up. And hey, because it's filled up, I get another Manta. All right, so I'm catching up with Jen on the Manta race. Which it was one that gives me one dollar. There we go. So I've got two more bucks that I can use to hire somebody else. Meanwhile, these get cheaper. Another one comes out. A Mantis Leader. Uh, flip all your inactive Mantas. Alrighty, so you can just refresh your Mantas without having to, um, you know, spend, you know, and, oh, and conquer location with a discount too. Even better. Nice, nice, nice. Although that's expensive. Cost four. Alright, so that was my turn. It is Jen's turn. She could now scout and then conquer with a strength of one. Hmm. So if she scouts, these will go away. These will come up and she gets a conquer with a discount. Yeah, I think so. I think Jen is going to scout. 
All right, so we miss our shot. Those are gone. These ones are now discounted. Six new ones come out. And Jen gets a $1 discount for conquering, but she's got two mantas that can help. And Jen wants to get something over here. Uh, let's see here. She will... Ooh. Hey, look at this. Jen will use this to get more strength towards conquering a mountain, so she won't have to use her mantas. That means she'll get this volcano, which comes in already completely risen. So, um, nice. And Jen will use this one to raise one thing up by one. So she'll raise this up. And now this one's almost completely risen. So now Jen just needs to get a, to get ris, risen past both of those. And Jen will have the five thing risen to score that, those points. I, I thought I had it for a while, but Jen has just pulled it out of nowhere and pulled ahead of me, um, with a well timed seahorse. And Jen's next turn, she has no choice. She must spend her turn recalling all her stuff. Um, and it's back to me, back to my turn. But you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Aquatica is all about. And now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I up in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.